Welcome back to Dark Corner's Physical Media Reviews. This week's Blu-ray review is well outside our usual area, and some might suggest that the title Voyage of the Damned fooled us, as it may have been designed to fool audiences in 1976, with the marketing emphasising action and sex, which are really a very small part of an historical drama based on real events. Are we leaving? Really leaving? In brief, in 1939, a boatload of 937 Jews were allowed to leave Nazi Germany for Havana, ostensibly escaping persecution, immediately raising questions. All of a sudden, a thousand Jews are allowed to leave Germany. Why? Matters changed during their voyage. A wave of anti-Semitism sweeping Cuba. By the time they arrive, they are not permitted to disembark. In fact, it was never intended for your passengers to land. They then turn to America. You will not, repeat not, be permitted to dock at any United States port. And elsewhere. I was calm in New York, I was calm in Cuba, I was calm in London, I was calm in Paris. I'm very calm. The voyage to freedom becoming, as advertised, a voyage back to where they started. It's time you had your heads shaved again. It's a remarkable and largely shameful piece of history. The lives of 937 people. Just a commodity like everything else. And if this is the Hollywood version, taking certain liberties with specific events and characters... She's our daughter. ...then it's still a powerful film, and one that did sweep me up with it. We are one family. You are my family. It's certainly not perfect. Its excursions to Havana, while not uninteresting, take us away from the ship and the characters we know, and ultimately feel like an excuse for a bit of local colour. Although, that said, I think Ben Gazzara's performance as Morris Troper, fighting to find a place for the passengers, is one of the film's best. What the hell is happening here? Which does lead me to the main issue that everyone points out. This is overloaded with stars. Faye Dunaway, Oscar Werner, and particularly Max von Sydow we are, being used, are really excellent in the lead roles, but that's just the start of an extraordinary role call. I don't think Jose Estedes would be as big a part of this story if he were being played by anyone other than Orson Welles. In Cuba alone, we also have James Mason, Jose Ferrer, Catherine Ross, if every speaking role has not been cast with a star per se, then they are at least a recognisable face. I see. Dan Elliott there. And you find yourself playing Spot the Actor. There's that guy who knew the Death Star was vulnerable. That's not stunt casting, but by this point you're looking closely at everyone just in case, and it can take you out of the film. An effort has been made to give everyone their moment, from Malcolm McDowell to Lee Grant. There's honestly too many to run through, and it can overwhelm. In fact, I think it's a testament to the film's power that it is still very moving despite that overblown star power. This whole thing is more serious than I, than I thought, Ricardo. Perhaps inevitably, the Blu-ray commentary by Matthew Asprey Gear does focus on the people particularly the producer, TV magnate Lou Grade, and Orson Welles, about whom Gray has previously written in his book At the End of the Street in the Shadow. Also covering the film's mismarketing as a disaster movie in the vein of Irwin Allen. Other extras include the extended cut. The picture quality does dip on that because the original print couldn't be found, so this is a VHS upscale. More interesting than most extended cuts, as it had a different editor, Roger Sherrill, to the theatrical release edited by Tom Priestley. So you have two different takes on the same film, and Daniel Kremer's commentary guides us through the differences. There's also a fascinating hour-long career-spanning interview with cinematographer Billy Williams, who also shot Gandhi on Golden Pond and the Iraq section of The Exorcist and a far briefer but still entertaining interview with Malcolm McDowell, who refers to Lou Grade as Low Grade. He was never as successful in film as he was on TV. Despite some embellishment, I do think the film does justice to events, as well as raising interesting and often ignored points. Those Jews, 
They miss Germany. But why not? After all, they're Germans. Both sides also fight amongst themselves. Life is never black and white. The most important thing to say about the film is that it is a good film, not merely a worthy telling of an important story. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts on this film in the comments below.